Hello everybody, this is Mr. Zabo. This is the first of what we will call a three-part series on function operations. The first video is going to talk about adding and subtracting functions. The good news is we've done this. Adding and subtracting functions is not going to be something that's going to be terribly challenging for us. We just have to get used to the notation. So remember we have function notation. This says f of x we're naming the function f and the input values are x, g of x. There's two ways to write function addition when we are adding functions. You can write the names of the functions f plus g of x or you could write each function separately with the addition sign. Same thing goes with our subtraction functions f minus g of x or f of x minus g of x. That's stating the same thing. So for part a here, when we have the function f of x is equal to 2x squared plus 8, the function g of x is equal to x minus 3, when we write f plus g of x, we're really asking you to take function f of x and add it to function g of x, or add function g of x to function f of x. So in this case, I'm going to use the red color to denote function f of x. When I have f of x plus g of x, I'm taking the entire function f of x, which is 2x squared plus 8. I'm going to write it as a quantity because I want to make sure I keep that together. And I'm going to add to that function g of x. But again, I'm going to write it as a quantity. I'm going to write it inside the parentheses. That's going to be my function f plus my function g. The good news is, because it's addition, I'm really just distributing an addition sign. I don't have to change any signs here. I'm going to have 2x squared plus 8 plus, because I could distribute my positive, x, distribute my positive, I get minus 3. Now, like terms. Combine your like terms, and we're good to go. Make sure you write your function in standard form. So I could write that f plus g of x is equal to, I have 2x squared plus x, and then plus 8 and minus 3 are like terms. I have plus 5. When I combine these functions through addition, I get a quadratic trinomial. Now for the subtraction, f minus g of x, which is the same as f of x minus g of x, two different ways of writing this. The only difference is that we're subtracting, but that's a huge difference. Because now when I take my first function, f of x, which is still 2x squared plus 8, and I subtract my function g of x, which is x minus 3. Here's where it really matters that we had these written as quantities, because it's the entire function that I'm subtracting. That matters, because when I now distribute, I'm distributing my subtraction, or a negative 1. I'm subtracting x minus x and subtracting negative 3. That makes it a plus 3. The 2 x squared plus 8 doesn't change. I can bring that down. And I'm going to open up our note down here. But we're not quite done. I can write this as f minus g of x equals, again I want this in standard form. So I have my quadratic term minus my constant term or my linear term and this time I have plus 8 and plus 3, so it's plus 11. When I take function f and I subtract function g, I get a different quadratic trinomial. And that brings up our last point here, which is identifying the domains. When we are taking the sum or difference of functions, so f of x plus g of x, or f of x minus g of x, the domain for sum or difference will consist of the x values, which is the domain, that are in both the original functions. So what that's saying is we need to identify the domain of both original functions. 
So when we look at our function f, it's a quadratic binomial, there's nothing restricting what values we can choose as our input or what x values we can use. So this would have a domain of all real numbers. So x values such that x is all real numbers. Same thing, when I have a linear function x to the first, I don't have any restrictions. So my domain is all real numbers. Both functions, f and g, have a domain that represents all real numbers. Therefore, the domain of their sum and the domain of their difference will also have domains that are in both the original functions. Since both original functions are all real numbers, the domain for these will also be represented by all real numbers. And we're going to want to write that using set builder notation. In video two, we'll talk about how the domain changes when we're doing multiplication or division, and we have to pay a little bit closer attention to some details.